Hello friends, appointed times under the firmament. There's three very important times that we should be aware of. The first appointed time, the second appointed time, and the last appointed time. Now it might sound that I'm trying to be humorous, but I'm not kidding. The creator of our home under the dome will visit us three times. The first time as our savior, the second time as our king, and lastly, as the judge. He is in full control of everything that happens under the firmament, and he has shared his plans and the schedule with us in the Bible. Prophecies makes it real and believable, and help those who are a bit skeptic to convince them. Stay with us for the short series on appointed times under the firmament. You owe it to yourself, your life depends on it. But before we start, Let's close our eyes and ask once again for guidance from the Holy Spirit. Our loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we need you to guide us through the Holy Spirit. Touch every one of us listening. Help us to see the truth. Thank you that you are so patient with us. Show us the plans that you have for us. And help us to be ready for the second appointed time. We pray this in the name of Yeshua, your Son and our Saviour. Amen. Well, friends, as you can remember from our previous one, Daniel 2, the statue and the stone. Now, we know that we are living, according to the prophecy, in the time of the toes. And we are waiting for the stone, the next event in the prophecy that's going to break the statue. But just like us, King Nebuchadnezzar was also waiting, but he was waiting for the arms and chest of silver. And he wanted to know when will his kingdom come to an end. And the only person, of course, he could ask was Daniel. Daniel, please, search the scriptures and see if you can find when my kingdom will come to an end. Can you imagine the pressure the wise men were under again? This time the kings want to know when his kingdom will come to an end. Daniel prayerfully studied all the prophecies he could lay his hands on and all the books that the king had in his library. Slowly the pieces of the puzzles fit together. Reading from the prophet Jeremiah, he discovered the first piece in the puzzle. Israel will be in captivity for 70 years. In Jeremiah 25 verse 11 it reads, and this whole land shall be a desolation. And, they, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon for 70 years. And a little bit further in the book of Jeremiah, he, in 29, he reads that Israel will return to, to Jerusalem after 70 years. And we read in verse 10, it says, For thus says the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished in Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you, and causing you to return to Jerusalem. Now they had the, the minimum period at least for the king, because Israel will be in captivity in Babylon. So it means Babylon will last for 70 years. Now Daniel was wondering why 70 years specifically? Reading further in Leviticus 25 verse 1 to 7, God had asked his people to trust his provision and his faithfulness. And by a very interesting um, request, he asked them to stop farming every seventh year and let the land rest. We can read about this in Leviticus 25 verse 1 to 7, but I'm just briefly going to talk about it. He says, when I bring you into the land that I will give you, you can work it for six years, but on the seventh year, let it rest. No sowing and no pruning of, of the vineyard. And you're not supposed to harvest. On that year, anybody, you, your neighbors, the stranger, the cattle and the wild animals can eat off the land. And the beautiful promise that came with it, God said, you rest, I will provide. In Leviticus 25 verse 19, he reads, And the land shall yield the fruit, and you shall eat yourself full and dwell therein safely. What a nice promise. But you might wonder, what does this have to do with the 70 years of captivity? Well, unfortunately, since Israel appointed their first king, 
they stopped doing this to let the land rest every seventh year. You know how kings is, huh? Tax and death is the only two things that we can be certain of. And they were more interested in money than the Messiah. But in just the next chapter of Leviticus, it tells us what the results will be if they don't let the land rest. We read in uh, verse 33, And I will scatter you among the heathen. I will draw out the sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy a Sabbath, as long as it lies desolate, and you be in your enemy's land. Even then shall the land rest and enjoy a Sabbath, as long as it lies desolate shall it rest. Because he did not rest in the Sabbath that you were supposed to let it rest. Now Daniel had the reason. From King Saul up to Daniel was 490 years. If you take 490 years and you divide it by 7 every 7th year, it gives you 70 years. So the Israelites owned the land 70 years of rest. And that's what happened in the time while they were in Babylon. But now Daniel had to continue searching because the king still did, didn't get the answer of why and when his kingdom will come to an end. Daniel discovered something else in Jeremiah. It says in Jeremiah 25 verse 12, And it shall come to pass when the 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity. And I will make it a perpetual desolation. Now friends, the Bible is very deep. Just that two words, a perpetual desolation, is a prophecy in its own again. Because the city of Babylon was never ever rebuilt. Even um, Saddam Hussein tried to restore it a little bit. But the Bible prophesied that it will be forever desolate. But back to our story. There were two events after 70 years. The one is Israel will be set free. And the other one is that Babylon will be punished. But by whom? Now Daniel is searching further and he discovered in Isaiah 44 verse 24 to Isaiah 45 verse 6 an amazing prophecy that is very specific. It even give, gave a name. Let's read this prophecy and I will fill you in with a little bit of the history while I'm doing it. We can read in uh, Daniel 5 when the end of the Babylonian empire was and how it happened during the reign of King Balthasar. But for you who don't know, if you search in history books, the city of Babylon was very well protected but it had a river running through it in the middle, the Euphrates River. And the Medo Persians came and they blocked that river off during the night. And then they came in the dry riverbed into the city. The gates were left open that night because they had a big party and they conquered Babylon. Now if you read the prophecy, and I'll just read it in short, you'll see how precise it was. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that had formed thee from the wound, I am the Lord that maketh everything. I have stretched out the heavens alone, and I have spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. I said to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited again, and to the cities of Judah you shall be built. That said to the deep, be dry, and I will dry up the rivers. That's exactly what happened to the Freitas River. That said to Cyrus, he is my shepherd, he shall perform all my pleasures. Even saying to Jerusalem, thy shall be built. So Cyrus will give the command for Jerusalem to be built. He said to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him. I will loosen the loins of the kings. If you read in uh, Daniel 2, uh, 5, it says that King Balthasar's legs were shaking. And this is exactly what he says here. I will loosen the loins of the kings. To open before him the two leaven gates, and the gates shall not be shut. That's exactly what happened again. During the night of the party, they were so secure in themselves that they didn't close the gates that opened up onto the Euphrates River. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron. I will give thee the treasures of darkness, of hidden riches, of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, I am the God of Israel. For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect, 
I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou knowest me not. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I go to thee, though thou hast not known me. What an amazing prophecy. Isaiah said this 150 years before it happened. And he stated exactly that um, Cyrus would come and free Israel. Now, this is bad news for King Nebuchadnezzar. The Persians will come at the end of 70 years to free Daniel and Israelites. So here, King Nebuchadnezzar had his answer. This was current prophecies that Daniel was living in. Daniel was in slavery, but by searching the scriptures diligently, he found out exactly when it will end. We too are living like Daniel in slavery, waiting for the end to come. Maybe we, by searching diligently, will also find when our appointed time of the end will be. Now friends, we are already by 11 minutes, and again we didn't get to the next 490 years. We got 490 years before that the land didn't rest, the 70 year captivity, and now in our next episode we'll get to the last 490 years. That's going to go up all the way to the first appointed time when the Messiah came as our Savior. So, don't miss it. Next time, we'll talk about that, the 490 years, all the way up to the Messiah. God bless.